it is legal to implement wellness programs. There are, however, parameters that the regulations have set into place that need to be considered. That's why it's extremely important to work with, um, to have a, a team of experts that support you when it comes to the design of the program, because beyond just the ACA's most recent with healthcare reform, the regulations that have come out that are a little clearer than some of the previous regulations, there's still some conflicting regulations that are there when it comes to the other federal um, laws as well as the state laws that need to be taken into consideration. So um, it's important that you have your experts along with having, we always recommend that you have your legal counsel review all of your, your plans um, before finalizing those just to make sure that you're protected against any potential litigation issues. So you, you are able to implement that and uh, align a premium differential or a premium surcharge with those, but you definitely want to make sure you're following along the regulations. Smoking is definitely a hot button when it comes to a clear change that needs to happen for improving health. Um, so it's something that also has a lot of regulations around that. So you cannot make your employees stop smoking. However, you can implement a surcharge that does, um, if they are a, smoke, a tobacco user actually you should say, um, then they would be exposed to having that surcharge that can be up to 50% of the, of the monthly premium, the total monthly premium. Now, something that you need to consider is that you're required to offer a reasonable alternative standard so that they can still qualify for that differential so they can avoid that surcharge. So there's several different things, including timing as well as communications that need to be taken into consideration when you're rolling out a tobacco surcharge. A reasonable alternative standard is really vaguely defined when it comes to the law, so that does leave a lot up for interpretation. However, the one thing that's clear when it comes to the laws is that your program needs to be designed with a, a genuine attempt at improving health. And so when you think about it in those terms and you think about someone who's either not, they've not met a health standard, whether that's tobacco or BMI, for example, and they're unable to meet that and then thinking through what would be something that would actually help to improve their health. So that would be the thing that they can complete to still uh, avoid that surcharge or earn that, that discount. And so that can vary from completing a workshop or working with a health coach or completing a tobacco cessation program. However, it's just important to note that um, they, you can't require that they do meet the standard after completing those alternative activities. For more helpful HR tips and information to keep your business in compliance, keep watching Connell Concepts.